Uh, hello, SGD. Looking at uh, Egyptian constellations and some is interesting references to, well, Sheset and Fauf, but uh, the art of timekeeping. Uh, so very ancient Egyptian sundials. They also divided their day into 12 hours and the night into 12 hours. And you can see these are from the coffin te texts of uh, Senenmut and the division of, well, into 24 sections. So even as there are other earlier coffin texts as well. Uh, exist sundials that have been found a division of 12 hours and 12 days, which I find very interesting in regards to weights and measures and so forth, which is intricately related to observation, measuring the heavens and the constellations, using that as a timekeeping device. Now, for instance, um, I've done some videos on this in the past, especially in regards to, like, for instance, pyramids and temples and their northern orientation to the North Star. Now what you see is these palm fronds, these sort of like F looking sign. You'll see it here again. And these are in regard, it's a reference again to Sheset, the palm frond, the measuring, the counting device and timekeeping. And you'll see it here as well. So that's the reference to New Year, where we have the uh, Arket, the, Horai, the sun rising, so marking the Egyptian New Year, which was the flood on the solstice. And that's even with the, in regards to pyramid orientations and, and uh, the causeway orientations and the pyramid. Done a lot on that in the past, but um, also this reference to timekeeping. I think it's very interesting in regards to the weights and measures, divisions of days into hours, minutes, seconds, which goes back then to very ancient times. The Egyptians, the Babylonians were in contact. Um, it's... You know, there are no smoking gun documents, but the point of this is the Egyptian constellations. And um, this particular reference is an, a, a nice one, but there are older ones. And we'll touch on those, but what we have here is a star chart, constellation chart. And we'll go more in a second, but the crocodile on the hippo. The lion. We also have, uh, not Selkis, but uh, anyway, that's the... Oh, geez, now the name escapes me at the moment, but let's just focus the crocodile and the hippo. This mooring shaft, so this you know big long triangle, which brings us to the bull's foreleg, and Horus. Uh, in, so the Mesketu, the set, and the bull's foreleg, uh, Horus um, connected to that as well. So I mentioned that in the past in regards to again North Star, Pole Star constellations the undying stars. So the, the North Star was the star, even in the pyramid text, which was the holiest of holiest. It never went away. Now, the, const the zodiac constellations, for instance, Orion, Leo, etc., uh, the North Star was the imperishable star. It never. It was like the holy, that's the king of the stars, as where um, Sirius, the Orion spelt, Leo, uh, the Pleiades, these they, they were the perishable stars. They came and they went, so they were important. But uh, even again, the pyramid text text we, pyramid text say we're going to the north. They would rise through what's translated as Orion, but the, the goal, the orientation, was the north star. But I'll put some links to earlier videos in the description because again, because the north star is it's always there. It does not move. All the lesser stars, including Orion's belt travel around that and sometimes they're not visible for parts of a year but all all of the time the north star is always there but we actually have a nice little constellation chart there so this is uh, stellarium and i have the egyptian constellations here now for instance you'll see sa or sahu the lion the mooring post the hippopotamus and the crocodile and i'll put links to the papers to the people who um have published on this but this is a bit uh, messy because all the stars are you know the view is there so this is the same view and it's just simplified so we don't have as many stars cluttering it up we have Horus the lion the bull's foreleg which again you know, the, the, uh, the the bear constellation the little bear points to the North Star so that's the North Star there in the in it now Polaris is very dim, but everything's pointing to the North Star in that all these lines are pointing there. Hippopotamus, crocodile, uh, the prow. We'll have a look at that as well. 
but that's just the cleaned up version. So now this is the Western, the Greek Babylonian constellation, the Western constellation we have now. So you see things like Phoecus, Scorpio, Sagittarius, uh, Hercules, uh, Perseus, Taurus, or Orion. So there's Orion, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo the Lion. That's the same view again. Now we just get all those stars in the way. Now we also have, you know, again Orion and Canis Major and Sirius, or the Dog Star, the brightest star in the sky. That's the same. so. There's all the Western, the modern constellations that we're um, again they're quite old, but most of the 88 constellations we have now are relatively new. Um, the Ptolemaic there are only 48 constellations. So, for instance, like Telescopium is a modern constellation in that sense, but uh, So again, just all the, the Western constellations. So all these views I'm showing, it's just exactly the same angle, uh, just with, there's the Egyptian constellations, tidied up a bit. There's all the bright stars, so you see Orion's belt, for instance, and Sirius. Now, where are we going? Okay, now, let's begin. So, Leo the Lion, you know, you have Leo, but you also have um, Leo Minor. So if we go up there, there we see Leo and Leo Minor. So that's the standard constellation art we have now. There's Leo. You can overlay that, so just to put that in perspective. So that's the modern or the Western constellations. We skip over and there we see the Egyptian constellations and in that same position we have the Lion. Egyptian constellations, just, you know, just to overlay Leo or the Lion image. Now these are the Egyptian, so if you go back to this one, this particular view is if you're standing on the earth looking up. Now um, even constellation art, you'll find pictures of Leo facing one way. So that's what Leo looks like on the earth looking up into the heavens. But there are other versions of, of all constellation art tends, uh, tends to be, there's two different, there's uh, orthographic, which is looking down on the constellation. So, you know, you have to imagine you're way, way out in space looking at the constellations as they would be projected down onto the Earth. This particular view is looking from the Earth up. Now, this is an orthographic view. I think that's the term. These are the Egyptian constellations as they would appear projected down onto the Earth. So, everything gets reversed. So, Leo's facing that way. This is from the Earth looking up. But if we go to this view, Leo is now facing the other way. And uh, so that they get reversed. This is an important feature. Even with Western constellation art, uh, you have to fit, there's, there's basically the human view looking up or the God's eye view looking down, in which case things get reversed. This is the God's eye view. And so we have the bull's foreleg or Mesketu, the, um, the mooring post, Horus, the lion, and the hippopotamus and the crocodile. And we also, uh, but stick to this view for a moment. So we go back here. We have the hippopotamus and the crocodile, Horus, the bull's foreleg, Mesketu, with those three stars, which are very similar in their design, uh, not their design, in their layout in regards to Orion's belt. And we have this, well, the mooring post. So uh, the thing with, with Egyptian art, they didn't tend to be like the modern scientific way we think about it, it was always a little bit askew for proportions. Um, you know, for instance, you see the picture of a pharaoh, he's always a giant, but the people next to him are small because the pharaoh always had to be larger. than the. So even when the pharaoh is sitting, a person is standing behind his throne, they're always shorter than the pharaoh because uh, you could even when the pharaoh was sitting, the person standing behind him had to be smaller. Uh, so just to focus in on this particular part of that image. So let's just crop that out. Okay, now we have this and we'll compare it to the God's eye view of the Egyptian constellations. So first let's look at the hippopotamus and the crocodile. Now there we have it there. Now notice, again, now I'm the God's eye view, I've had to flip it around. To, so the human view would be like this, but the projected down onto the earth view, orthographic, is like that. So we see the hippopotamus and the crocodile. 
crocodile and the hippopotamus. There you go. Okay. Now just so it doesn't overlap, I've just erased that portion out. Now we take this picture and again we have to flip it around, mirror it to make it fit. Uh, again, Mr. Bull's leg connected to set, and there we see Horace. Bull's leg and Horace. You can even see the way he's, you know, the spear coming down. So Horace and the bull's leg. And again, because these are not in the in, um, scale perspective type of drawing, you know, the Egyptians didn't uh, illustrate that way. So I've just dimmed it down now. You can still see, you get an idea of uh, even the position of the hands and the body and spearing the bolt one, two, three. So even that, the uh, little bear constellation and the mesquite you or the bull's four. Uh, again, I've done uh, videos in the past on this. We'll go into, I'll go into a bit more detail in it, especially the stretching the cord ceremony in Sheset. But we also, if we go back a moment, we also have the mooring post. So there we see the mooring post touching the last star at the end of Ursa Minor, the little bear, or the bull's foreleg in Egypt. So even though it's not, you know, 100% to scale, um, this picture can be translated into these constellations. Just faded out. So Horus, the bull's foreleg, the mooring post, the crocodile, the hippopotamus, and these the hippo, the hippo as well. Can, this the, the legend of the bull's foreleg and set and so forth. But if you just you know change it a little bit, you can see how it fits a little bit better with the position of the hands. Now it's not the. Uh, but again, we see Horus constellation, bull's foreleg, or get you the North Star. Uh, which go to the uh, pyramid orientations and even the shafts in the Great Pyramid which would bring them to a very particular date around 2500 BC because they point to Orion's belt and to uh, Sodpet or Sirius, the consort. So there's those. Now there's another version of the bull's foreleg. So there's the larger picture now. Even this uh, that's the sky above, as above, so below in a way. I did a video on that as well. Some interesting connections there um, in regards to Arquette and the f uh, annual flood and the pyramids. But there, you know, so again, you have to flip this around, but the bull's foreleg and even the arrangement of the stars there. So I've just moved that to the side, but you see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then these other stars and that bend in the in the leg, or get you. Uh, the line, because it's the God's eye view, so again in constellation art you'll get either the earth view or the sky view projected down, so there we see a more modern version of Leo, again it's facing in the other direction because it's the orthographic looking down view, but if we go back to this chart and we see the lion, and even its relative sort of position below um, Horus and, and the bull and then we have uh, Selk, now I'll go into that more because it's a little bit uh, bit trickier but the uh, crocodile god which his still name is, begins with an S as well but I forget it at the moment so they sort of work uh, quite nicely and uh, back to the Egyptian constellations now we also have this constellation over here, the prow Back to the Western constellations, the Prow. So Scorpio, a Prow. Fits very nicely. Uh, of course, we already showed Leo, so, or the Lion. But now we come to Orion Ca and Sirius in Canis Major, and Sahu, or, or Sa, uh, which is connected to Osiris. So we already have Horus up here, and then we have Osiris. And. So Egyptian constellations in the background, and there we have the West, like Gemini, Monos, um, Monoceros, or the Unicorn, Orion, Lepus, 
and Sirius you know, in Canis Mage. So these are the modern Western, let's just call them Greek Babylonian, um, and later on constellations. And there is a tendency to project uh, our, you know, whether it's to see modern technology, you know, and that type of stuff um, onto the Egyptians. And uh, but if we look, at, so what, what I've done, so you can see again, it's just there faded out, but I've kept Sirius and the three stars of Orion's belt. And then we come, so Sirius and the three stars of Orion's belt, and there we see Sa or Sahu. Now, for instance, the uh, Pyramid of Sahu Ray, Sahu Ray, or Kaf Ray, or Menkar Ray, which is a um, common naming title to attach yourself to Ray, or rather, the god. But there we have the Egyptian constellations. And so Sa or Sahu, which is connected to Osiris. So again, in the pyramid texts, uh, they speak... Uh, again, the pyramids are all pointing to the north, so they're all going to the north star. But in that journey, as it is mentioned in the pyramid text, they do go to... Uh, now, the pyramid text will say Orion very often. But the Egyptian constellation of Sa or Sahu, Osiris as well. So again, that... you know. Osiris going through to eventually to the imperishable, the northern stars, unlike Orion, which is of the perishable, the, you know, sometimes there, sometimes not, uh, the moving stars. But now what's happened is you'll often see this type of image. Um, for instance, the uh, three pyramids in Orion, well, I'm not from, um, that's something else, but it's to translate those three stars because we have Orion's belt now that therefore Orion you know, is there. Now for instance Orion and the three stars of Orion's belt they roughly point to Sirius, the brightest star, Sodpet, which is the consort of, of Osiris or, or Sahu and, and they roughly point but uh, here's another image of Sa and again we see him wearing the crown of Upper Egypt, and uh, there we have the, the unified crown. So we have with that little curly thing that's lower in Upper Egypt. But here we have Sa with the crown of Upper Egypt, and there Sa and the crown um, matching there. So rather than Orion's belt, it's these three stars would point to the the headband, let's call it, or, or the line of the crown. So it doesn't take away from any of that other, you know, um, I'm not necessarily in, in agreement with, you know, for instance, Orion correlation, for, you know, that's, but um, definitely those stars were important, this, the, whether it was Sirius or the three stars of Orion, very important to every culture across the world because they're so bright and so visible and that's why a lot of these, uh, the major constellations, for instance, Antares in Scorpio, it's a very bright red star. Antares is the rival of Mars, because it's often confused with Mars, because it's red. That's up in Scorpio, which is now covered there. But uh, yeah, And again, so Sa, to get this image to fit that one, what we have to do is mirror it. So go into the, again, the God's eye view. And again, the solar boat, uh, the, the, the journey from the pyramid, Osiris, uh, through Orion or Sa, uh, eventually to the North Star. But to get it to fit, we need to flip it around. And it, it makes make it a little bit... Oh, I didn't do it transparent. But yeah, so you see he's carrying the... Uh, what's the name? Uh, the Ankh is life in this rod, which I can't remember the name, is the symbol of power. But yeah, he's got, again, Sa, he has a rod. And the raised hand, just like here. And then we have going over to Sahu, Osiris, but the consort being Sodpet or Sirius, which is connected to Isis. So Osiris, the star of Isis, Sirius. And there are those uh, constellations. So Horus, the lion, the prow, which, nice, which is neat. Uh, because of the brightness of Scorpio and the crocodile, the hippopotamus, and so forth. So, rather rough one, but just to, these are from Stellarium, and 
I'll try to remember to post some links in regards to uh, the study of this and why such Im imagery such as this uh, is so important because again stars timekeeping even the symbols themselves uh, again these the uh, curved palm frond connected to Shesset and goddess of weights measures mathematics etc who's you know the female equivalent of Foth the god of science architecture and so forth uh, Shesset's the mistress of the architects and yeah so uh, you have a reasonable accurate constellation chart happening here as well as these references to the hours and the timekeeping and the, the divisions also for instance the 36 deckhands um, as well so yeah Egyptian constellations uh, Leo would be you know the lion being there and I've uh, done some on the Dendera zodiac as well and the Dendera zodiac was done quite late in Ptolemaic times and there you see Greek zodiac mixed with Egyptian zodiac as well there's also a reference to the 36 decans of ancient Egypt as well but again you have a hippopotamus a crocodile hippopotamus and crocodile the mooring post the mooring post connecting to the bull's leg mesquite you or uh, the little bear in modern constellations and also you have a lion uh, Horus spearing the bull's leg okay so I'll put some link to some earlier videos where it um, because this has a lot to do with Egyptian architecture orientation of, of temples pyramids again always open to the north pointing to the north even the, the great pyramid the shaft pointing to the north side um, would have aligned to Sirius and to Orion uh, at the time that um, the uh, carbon dating and luminescence testing is which is around about 2000 500 BC which matches uh, for instance Manifo so these texts of Egyptian history which come from Manifo which are used in regards to the uh, time before uh, well they the same text which sort of tries to push it back or would be well they also very clearly the Egyptians uh, of that told us it was Khufu, Khafre, Menkaure who built those pyramids so the same legends that are used to say oh it's uh, Zeptepi, uh, the same text which also will name Khafre Menkare Khuf um, and um, uh, or, uh, Khufu Cheops as the the builders of the three uh, Giza pyramids too so it's important to keep that in mind because it's if you sort of yeah uh, as his thing well it, listen to the legends of the people who were there well if we do that in in Egyptian case well, that sort of pretty much solidifies who and when the date is, but that's not really, you know, that's not even here or there to me because it's, uh, that's for other people to study. I'm um, way out of my depth in 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 that. But yeah, if you look at the texts, uh, the hieroglyphs and so forth, um, not just the images I'm showing here, there is quite a bit. You know, it's a, it, each thing backs onto the other, and it's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a meme trope. You know, the, the Egyptologists and the academics um, shame for, it's a shame that uh, yeah the same text which you use to to promote one thing will also go to anyway I'm, I'm rambling now I'm staying on an Egyptian uh, constellations and rather than project the Western ones on there well um, both the academics you know the, um, but also based on the the written and the imagery and also which confirms the, the stars and the orientations so forth themselves it's a pretty strong case um, all right so that's it Egyptian constellation just a rough one this was uh, I forget the part of me I, um, I had a comment um, in regards to this and I was going to you know, rather than write it in the reply to a comment maybe other people again would be interested in it oh, sorry I forget your channel no, anyway yeah there's the uh, Egyptian constellation links to some related videos and the papers uh, so forth where this comes from um, yeah and this one I, I was just looking at it and then I, I realized the mooring post and stuff I'm sure that the papers notice this 
connection between the mooring post, the tip of the bull, and so forth. So definitely not taking credit for it, but it's when when you look at it, uh, pay attention to again these earlier papers and so forth. It's it's pretty obvious um, the way that these uh, connections work. Anyway, SGD, have a good one. Cheers.